Hey everyone! Today on the Plastic Canvas, I'm going to show you how to paint eyes on your miniatures. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to the seventh episode of this series called Anyone, Yes Anyone Can Paint Miniatures. In this series, I'm taking you through each step in the miniature painting process to hopefully show you that painting minis is a lot more simple than what you think it may be and that it's not just for people that have an artistic flair or that can paint to a really high standard, anyone can do it. Now, in the previous episode of this series, we looked at ways that we can use layering to do our highlighting and shading. If you haven't seen that episode yet, there is a link to it in the description below. Um, but today, we're going to have a look at one way that I've found to really, really easily paint eyes. Now, this is a part of painting miniatures that is notoriously difficult. And I think the main reason for that is because with the scale of the miniatures that we're often painting at, you know, 28 or 32 mils, um, when it comes to the eyes, they are incredibly small, but it's hard to paint them how small they should actually be. And so what often ends up happening is even though you do paint them small, they look too big in relation to the rest of the mini and the character often looks really surprised because their eyes are really, really wide. So I'm going to show you a way of keeping them nice and small so they look in proportion and it doesn't have to be a really difficult aspect to paint in your minis. Alright, so for the first part of this video, I'm going to use this character here from Clank Legacy to show you just a simple basic approach to painting just human eyes. So, you know, the eyes that you'll be painting for the vast majority of the time. We're just going to start with some black and we're just going to fill in the eye sockets. Now, all we're looking for here is just the general kind of shape of the eyes doesn't matter if it's too big or if it goes too wide we just want to block in a basic shape there just filling in the eye socket but we do want to try and get some symmetricalness if that's a word with our two eye sockets so just being careful just to get them the similar sort of distance away from the nose but how wide they end up being how high and that um, not a problem at the moment because we're going to end up covering up the edges now we're just going to skeleton bone and I'm using skeleton bone rather than pure white for the whites of the eyes just because eyes are not actually that bright white. Um, so the skeleton bone is just a more accurate, uh, you know, match to the, to the proper color. And here we're just covering up most of that black, but we're leaving just the top edge of it exposed just so that we get a nice little border between the whites of the eyes and then the skin at the top um, and that'll just create a nice little bit of definition now here i'm painting the pupils with magenta but most of the time you'll just use black and that's what i use most of the time but her artwork shows magenta eyes so i'm doing the same thing here but here it's just nice two careful little dots and we just want them to be symmetrical so a similar distance from the nose and a similar height within the eyes now we're going to back to the skin tone that I started with or that you know that you base coated with and we're just starting in the corner um, where it meets the nose and then just running along the bottom edge covering up actually quite a bit of the eye you will want to leave you want to cover up part of the pupil that's a good little guide and then as we then get out towards that outer corner just rolling up towards the you know the top side of the head just to thin the eye out and just to give it that bit of shape so now with the other one there starting in the corner where the eye meets the nose covering up most of the bottom of the eye and then as we get towards that outer corner then just rolling up towards the top of the head now, I always do eyes pretty much as the last thing. So I laid a Reichlin flesh shade wash down over the top of the tan skin before doing the eyes. So now because I've used the tan skin just to neaten the shape up of the eyes, you've then obviously got that difference between the tan skin that I've just painted and then the washed tone of the skin. So now I'm just going back to re-highlight, you know, the forehead, cheekbones, all of those things just to blend them in together. But the reason why I think this really, really simple technique works well is because, first of all, 
you get that nice little border between the whites of the eyes and then this, you know, the, the forehead. So you get that little bit of a shadow effect, but it just gives a little bit of definition. But also by finishing with the skin tone along that bottom edge of the eyes and covering up probably nearly half of it, really. You want do want to be covering up at least part of the pupil. It helps you have lots of control over how wide the eyes look, because like I said in the intro, part of the difficulty I think and why eyes are often so, you know, that, that notoriously difficult thing to do is because even though you paint them really small in, you know, relation to the actual sort of world, in scale, they still look too wide and the characters look really surprised because if you think about your own eyes, think about how tall you are and then how wide open your eyes are in relation to your total height. When we come down to this scale, they should just be a sliver, really, really, really thin. And for the vast majority of miniatures that you paint, this really, really simple approach to painting eyes with just and just doing the black pupils there will be more than enough because it's really easy to keep the size in control and ultimately you just want the eyes to look right so that they're not going to stand out of some part that you mucked up. So now for the second part of the video, I want to show you how I go about painting glowing eyes because I think this is often a really, really cool, simple effect on creatures like this. So you can see I've already painted the eyes on this guy. I'm just going to just redo them just to show you how I'd go about it. So we're just going to start off with the black again. Now the reason I'm using black to start it off is so that the first colour that goes over the top is going to be kept nice and dark because we want that contrast between the darkest and the brightest colour. Here are the different colours that I'm going to use for the eyes. So we're just starting off with a really, really deep blue. And that's just because I'm doing blue glowing eyes. You could swap these colors out for anything. I show you a bit later on how I do it with red, just to show you just, you know, a, a different color. But just starting off with a really, really deep version of whatever color you want the eyes to be glowing. And here I'm just covering the whole eye um, and the black that's underneath is keeping this nice and dark. And now just Coming up here, uh, we're now swapping to just the slightly lighter version of this blue. And what I'm doing is just starting in the middle and then just gradually making that bit of paint that I'm putting down just a bit bigger and bigger and bigger until I've just got a thin line of that dark blue left around the edge because what we want to do is go from that dark blue on the outside to then that white that's right in the middle because that contrast is what's going to help it look like the eye is glowing. Now we're going to a lighter blue again. Same thing though, just starting right in the middle, just a small, small dot and then just gradually making a bigger working out towards the edge of the previous blue that was put down to make sure that we leave some of that exposed. And now here I am coming back with just the white. And this is just a tiny, tiny dot in the middle. So this is just really there to boost the contrast and just to make it look like the, the eye is really, really bright right in the middle and that it then feathers out to that darker blue around the edge. And I just quickly let it dry. I just hit it with the hairdryer. And then I've come back with the white again, just to do a final tiny dot right in the middle, just to really concentrate the whiteness in the middle, because getting that contrast is super important. And so now I'm going to do the other eye of this creature. And this time I'm going to make it a red glowing eye. Now I'm not going to talk through this one in detail because the process is exactly the same as the blue. It's just starting with that dark red and then just gradually working up to that white right in the middle to get that concentrated light right in there. So I'll just leave you to watch me doing the red and then I'll come back in at the end to close out the video.
All right, so with this red eye starting to come to an end, that's going to close out our video. After this, it just is going to finish off by cycling through some photos of other eyes that I've painted, just so that you can see some different approaches and different effects that you can get. So I really hope that you found this video useful. I've only shown two different approaches in this video. Eyes are one of those things where it really comes down to what effect you're after at the end as to how you go about painting it. But that first technique that I showed you there for painting the human eyes, when I stumbled across that one, it solved so many of my problems because painting creatures eyes, I didn't have too much trouble with that, but painting human eyes, trying to get them the right size in the correct proportion so that they don't look really surprised, that was one that I had trouble with, but following that, that are really, really useful. So I hope that you find that one useful as well. So thank you very, very much for checking out another one of my videos. Uh, if you did enjoy it and found it useful, please do give it a like and hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't yet to stay up to date with these videos as they keep coming out. We're going to be doing basing next, which is going to pretty well wrap up this series. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that one as it comes out. So thanks for checking this out. Uh, until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.